There are so many amazing games being published today and tabletop RPGs have exploded, giving us a wealth of fantastic game worlds to explore. Most of people out there already are familiar with the granddaddy of RPGs, Dungeons and Dragons, and the fifth edition rule set, in my opinion, is D&D's finest hour. But not all of these fantastic game worlds function on D&D's 5e rule set. Our superhero RPG, Callisto 6, uses the Cypher system by Monty Cook Games. Cypher is an elegant, simple system that really leans in when it comes to liberating the storyteller from crunch so they can focus more on narrative while still supplying structures for those brilliant moments when you land that sweet, sweet 20 on a die roll. I've come to know the system pretty well, but not without the help of one of my longtime players, Sam DeLev. Quick, while the GM's not looking, let's decipher this system. So. You've been playing and the time has come to test your metal and make a roll. While you grab your d20, the GM will decide if this kind of task requires might, speed, or intellect. Then they assign your task a difficulty level. An average task that's doable with a little focus is level two. Multiply that difficulty level by three to find out what number you have to roll. So for that average task, you'd have to roll a six or higher to succeed. So say you're late for work and rushing to catch the mag rail. The GM figures a short sprint for the train might normally be a speed task of difficulty two, but there's a big crowd of people exiting the train, so it's bumped up to difficulty four. Multiply by three, and you know you have to roll a 12 or higher to push through the crowd fast enough to make it to the train before the doors close. For most characters in Cypher, difficulty levels can be anywhere from zero to 10. When it's a difficulty zero, you don't even have to roll. You automatically succeed. But consider rolling, because anytime you roll, you have a chance to crit. Yeah, there's a chance you might roll a one and your GM will make things worse for you. But hear me out, because there's a bigger chance of rolling good things. In Cypher, a die roll that ranges from 17 to 20 yields benefits. Rolling a 17 lets you deal one extra point of damage in combat. With a natural 18, it becomes two extra points of damage. 19 is where things get interesting, allowing you to either deal three points of extra damage or create a minor effect. Minor effects might be something like knocking your foe back a few feet, hitting a specific part of the body or distracting them. A natural 20 in Cypher lets the player deal four extra points of damage or go for a major effect like a knockdown, stun, or disarm. But if difficulty zero is an automatic success or a chance for sweet, sweet minor or major effects, not even nat 20 can get you over those higher difficulty levels. If you have a difficulty 10 task, you can't even roll a 30 on a 20-sided die. There aren't 30 sides. So, in the next episode, we'll get into how Cypher characters can accomplish even the hardest, seemingly impossible, tasks. You know how to do something ordinary in the Cypher system. So let's look at how to use your pool points for effort and how Edge helps as we prepare to do something extraordinary. What if Oya isn't running through the station to catch the train? What if the train's moving? and she's on top of it, trying to jump from one car to another. Unless you're real good or you're trying real hard, that's almost impossible. So the GM sets this jump as a might task with a difficulty of seven. If Oya doesn't do something to bring that difficulty down, she physically cannot roll high enough to succeed. So she's gonna try real hard using effort. For each level of effort she spends, she brings the difficulty of the task down by one. Might, speed, and intellect each have a stat pool of points to spend on effort. Because this is a might task, Oya has to spend from her might pool. A tier one, basically a level one, character can spend one level of effort, but a tier two character can spend two levels of effort, and so on, up to the top level at tier six. The first level of effort costs three points, but the second level and everyone after that costs only two pool points each. Oya is tier two, so she could bring down the difficulty by two levels if she decides to put all her effort into this jump, but it would cost her five might points three for the first level, two for the second. That's an expensive risk. If she fails the jump and falls, she could take damage. And those health points also come from your pools. But Oya takes the risk and spends both levels of effort, reducing the difficulty from seven down to five. Now the impossible's still real freaking hard, rolling a 15 or higher, and it's possible. Jumping next to her is Hops, attempting this same difficulty seven jump. Hops is pretty darn good at strong people stuff. It gives her an edge in might. Edge lowers the cost of spending pool points. If Hops has two edge in might, spending those two levels of effort only costs three points, not five like Oya. Each tier, your character gets another point of edge, just like their effort. You could put some edge in might and some in speed and some in intellect and make all your point spends cheaper, or you could concentrate them in one stat, 
stacking that edge discount until you have enough to spend a level of two of effort for free. So that's how effort and edge work. But there's more to jumping trains than just trying real hard, right? Next time, we'll talk about how with the right skills and tools for the job, you can hop trains with ease. <sighs> Where were we? Oh yeah, jumping between moving trains. I'm sure everything's fine. So, it's difficulty seven jump, rolling an impossible 21 on a 20-sided die. Oya and Hops roll high enough to jump to the other side. Now Cass is at the bat. Cass is not only naturally mighty, but she is skilled in athletics. Hmm. Maybe she did track and field in high school. That skill lets her lower the difficulty of the roll. But you can lower the difficulty not just once, but up to a maximum of twice the skills if you're specialized. Turns out Cass was in track and field, and she did long jump. So, with her jumping specialization in athletics, Cass's difficulty goes from seven down to five. Of course, skills cut both ways. If you're clumsy, it might raise the difficulty by having an inability in jumping. It's like, it's like an anti-skill. Not that I know anything about that. Oh, hey, we were talking about Cass. Anyway, Cass has more than her high school track and field skills to help her. She also has equipment to make the job easier. Magnetic boots to stick the landing, courtesy of Lacey. Equipment counts as an asset, and that also lowers the difficulty. Like skills, assets lower the difficulty by as much as two levels. Cass not only has the mag boots as an asset, but she has Oya and Hops on the other train, and they're ready to catch and steady her. So the GM counts that as her second asset. For most characters, that's as much as she can lower the difficulty. Cass isn't the most characters. She's one of the Callisto Six, so she uses an optional superhero rule called Power Shifts. Power Shifts are like free levels of effort for your superpowers, so that heroes really feel powerful. Cass has two Power Shifts in Strength, which count toward tasks like leaping a tall building in a single bound. That's gonna come in handy. So, Cass's mag boots hum. Her friends hold out their arms to catch her, and she feels the muscle memory of high school track and field kick in augmented by the Callisto Six energy. She has a skill in athletics, a specialization in jumping, an asset of magnetic boots and an asset from her friend's help, as well as two free levels of effort from her power shifts and strength. She's brought the difficulty of this task all the way from seven down to one. But let's say Cass wants to impress someone, so if she spends a level of effort. Like Hops, she has two edge and might, so it only costs her one might point to knock down that last level of difficulty and bring this task to zero. Now that ridiculous 21 roll on a 20-sided die has turned into an automatic success as Cass jumps onto the train right into the arms of her friends. At first, it seemed like jumping between two moving trains would be impossible. But in Cypher, with the right skills, assets, a little bit of effort, and uh, maybe some superpowers, it's nothing at all.